My theme song for 2024 is Rich Baby Daddy by Drake because I'm manifesting for myself a rich baby daddy. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit the wall. The only thing you want is to have kids. And now with a rich guy, have a baby by me and be a millionaire. 70 year old man once told me that you should always be dating at least three guys at once. Never just one. And don't drop the other guys off your roster until one fully commits to you until you're engaged. I'll think about that a lot. This is evidence enough that the war is undefeated. You saw the first lady, she wants to, me, to have uh, kids with a rich guy. She's no longer thinking about marriage because she's seen that marriage prospects, they are not there, she's hit the wall. And the other one, she wants to date multiple men at the same time, hoping that one guy will take her seriously. So if you're dating four guys and none of them are proposing, oh, the undefeated war. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Why are people always worried about what face Ben has on? Like if he did, if Ben like walks out the house ben is and he's like, all right, you don't need to worry about Ben. Let me just tell you, he is good. He is happy. He is here. He is nominated. He's like, I'm chilling. I don't understand what people are pressed for. Well, damn, he's just drinking coffee and eating donuts. Y'all leave him alone. He's all right. He is all right. I'm 34. And after being single for so many years, I lost count of how many years I've been single for finally starting to actively date in Chicago. And it's so, it's so hard. It's actually making me feel away right now. It's making me feel really, really sad. I didn't realize how emotionally taxing it would be but once i started dating from zero instead of from a hundred it got a little bit easier i'm learning that i am a bit of a slow burn at least in the beginning stages of talking to somebody you need to vet who you are just because you're cute and good looking and can dress doesn't mean anything to me anymore i want to know who you are as a person and i want to make sure that i feel comfortable around you after the slow burn though if i feel safe around you and comfortable I will probably get attached to you in no less than four seconds. If we could start out as friends first and develop a friendship in the beginning, that would be so ideal. But I know a lot of men don't see the benefit of being friends first, and I really wish they would because when you develop a friendship with a woman first and then you go into a You mean you put in a man in a friend zone? And then later on, when you don't have options, then you say, oh, uh, I think we've been friends for some time now and I think we should take this friendship to right, the next step or oh, have some feelings for you. You mean that kind of thing? <laughs> oh man, the war. A romantic relationship, it can be one of the most beautiful relationships. One of my friends just told me what a soul tie is and I think I have a soul tie right now. It is... <sighs> It's really hard, it's really painful. I want you to be obsessed with me, but not in the beginning before you even get to know me. I find that that is a bit of a turn off for me. It kind of like makes me nervous. Like, why are you obsessed with me when you don't even know me yet? Is that weird? Is that, does anyone else feel that way? I think I'm 40, 60 when it comes to dating, like 40% traditional, 60% modern I do want to be courted i do want to be courted i want you to open my there door are no such things 40 60 see where you're a modern woman or you're a traditional woman there is no other way about it so she's a modern woman first i want you to take me out i want you to pursue me i want to turn my brain off i want you to take care of me i am ready to be a damsel in distress the reason why i'll never fully depend on a man is because it's not fun when they take your lifestyle away from you and one of the girls i follow was talking about this she was saying how she would never be a stay-at-home girlfriend again without her own income and it made me reflect on my experiences with that and how i'm never doing that again <laughs> When I was in college, my parents paid all of my bills. They paid for my apartment that I was in. I left college. The boyfriend that I had at the time, I moved in with him and he paid all the bills. He bought me a car. Um, he did everything. I didn't even have a job um, at the time when I was with him. And I will never do that again. But when we broke up, 
I didn't have any place to live. I went back and lived with my parents and he kept the car. That was one of the only times in my life where I didn't have a job because I've had a job since I was 15 when I could start working. But the only other time I didn't work was... But you've not talked about you paying for anything since the age of 15. So here now she's talking about like she can never depend on a man. Like, look, your entire life you've always depended on somebody. Even when you are dating, you are depending on the boyfriend as if he was your husband. You're spending, taking care of you, putting uh, a roof over your head, feeding you, and <laughs> it's just funny how. Uh, <laughs> and she start preaching about you know don't depend on uh, ABC. <sighs> Man, stay at home mom for a little bit when I was married. So when I was married, I worked, but I also was a stay at home mom for a little bit when my kids were babies and that was interesting my husband at the time paid all the bills i was working i bought like groceries like little small things stuff for the kids house decor things like that like i was not paying major bills on the time that we started to have problems you are still depending on your husband hey let's get that out of the way yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're going towards divorce. I was actually working at Nordstrom as an assistant manager. So obviously Nordstrom is retail. I did not have normal hours. And I was making pretty good money working there. But then I knew that our marriage was about to be over and I was going to have to get a job that worked with my kids' schedule, like Monday through Friday. Like I couldn't work until 10 p.m. at night anymore. I took a major pay cut. I went from being an assistant manager to being like a front desk receptionist just so I could have Monday through Friday hours. I was making $13.50 an hour. The defining moment where I knew like this was it, like I have to move out, I, I left. It was when my husband at the time made a comment about how he earned all the money. And that, that was it for me. I was like, all right. That same weekend, I put all of my stuff in storage and moved back in with my parents until I could get an apartment of my own was back in like 2015 that doesn't make sense at all i think you just wanted to, to to move out the whole time you've been taken care of and your husband and then you say that okay you left because he made a commentary that he, he was making all the money maybe but wasn't that the truth <laughs> though I think you just wanted to divorce. You you were thinking about it. You were thinking about leaving him. And it's it's a thing where somebody says the wrong thing and then you're like, oh no, you said this, I'm done. Because you said that he, he's making all the money. So I'm done. I mean, people divorce for, for that. <laughs> that's crazy. And that's when I first started paying my own bills. I should have learned my lesson from the boyfriend that I was with who paid for everything. And I didn't, but let me tell you what, after me and my ex-husband got divorced, I'll never, I'll never fully put my life in a man's hands. Nothing feels better than coming into my own home that I made a home. Everything that is in this house is here because of me and nobody can take that away from me. You know, all this sprinkle sprinkle talk, it sounds nice and it can work, but I think you also have to be mindful of all the other situations that could happen if you decide to put your life in a man's hands. I personally will not be doing that ever again. Oh, and I think my skin is getting better.